discuss about the next topic that is populations. These populations, these are group of individuals belonging to a single species. So species are interbreeding group of individuals, interbreeding group of individuals is called generally a species. Populations means a group of individuals belonging to single species living at a specific area in a specific period. That is called generally a population. When we say interbreeding group, that doesn't mean that they are only sexually reproducing individuals we consider as population. But even asexually reproducing organisms also, asexually reproducing group also consider as population. These populations when we are discussing, we think about, we generally find some features of, the, of populations, characters of population, they are called population attributes, population attributes. These populations attributes means the features are there. They are mainly natality and mortality, natality and mortality. Natality is birth rate Mortality is death rate. Here we are talking about the entire group living at that particular place. So we talk about the birth rate of the population in a period, in a unit time. So if you take an example, suppose in a pond, there are 20 lotus plants are there. In one year, they increase it to, in one year, they increase it to 28. So the increase in the number, that is birth rate is, Eight, so increase in the number is eight. So this eight by twenty, that is point four, is considered the natality, birth rate. Same way, mortality. Suppose out of twenty, twenty organisms. Four died. So remaining are 16 only. In one year, we reduce it to 16. Four died. So four by 20. That is 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is the mortality of this population. These are the ways generally they calculate about the natality and mortality of a population. Sex ratio of individuals, of a population. So, the ratio between males and females. This is also important. When you are talking about the characters of a population, the ratio is also important. For example, humans, in the recent census, they said for 1,000 males, there are around 940 females. Just an example, if you take, this is the sex ratio of the population. Then, another important thing is population, in a population, we find age distribution is also important. 
age distribution is also important. In every population, there are three age groups. Three age groups we divide into three age groups. Pre-reproductive age group, that is young individuals. Pre-reproductive age group. Reproductive age group, mature individuals, and post reproductive age group, that is, older individuals. These three age groups generally we find in a population. Now, when we are describing a population, we describe if the population is increasing, it is called growing population or increasing population or stable population. If there is no uh, marked increase or declining population, if the older individuals are more, then birth rate might be less, then it, we call it as declining or decreasing population. So this description of a population they explain in the form of, they represent in the form of age pyramids. Age pyramids. For an increasing population, increasing population, the shape of the pyramid is upright triangle. At the base generally we take pre-reproductive age group. Pre-reproductive age group we take at the base. Then at the apex we take older individuals or post-reproductive age group and mature individuals reproductive age group. So, because in the increasing population, definitely natality will be more. So, pre-reproductive age group, that is young individuals are more. So, you will find an upright triangle. Shape of pyramid you will get for increasing population. If you take a stable population, stable population. The natality and mortality might be almost same. So, you will find almost all age groups will be approximately equal. So, you will find a bell-shaped pyramid. A bell-shaped pyramid almost pre- reproductive age group, reproductive age group and post reproductive age groups, all of them are almost equal. We can say natality is equal to mortality. In growing population, natality is greater than mortality increasing population. So, stable population you will find a bell shaped pyramid. Then if you take a declining population, birth rate is less than death rate. So, you will get an unshaped pyramid. Pre-reproductive age group is less. Post-reproductive and reproductive are almost similar. But pre-reproductive natality is less than mortality. So, you will find an unshaped 
pyramid. So, these are representing the type of nature of population in a particular society, in a particular time, whether it is upright triangle or bell shaped or unshaped, easily you can identify whether the population is increasing, stable or decreasing. This is about age distribution in a population, population density. Density is number of individuals, number of individuals in a unit area, in unit time. This is called population density. So generally population density we represent as numbers. Suppose you take a, a particular 100 square meters area, there are 100 rabbits in one year time. Like that we calculate the density. So D is equal to, or if you take population density as capital N, then it is number of individuals in a particular, at a specific area. N is equal to N by A. N is density, N is number of individuals and A is area. This is general calculation of population density taking numbers into consideration. But always you cannot express density in terms of numbers. Sometimes you will find a large tree, a banyan tree is there. Number is only one and there are many plants in that area, parthenium plants. These are shrubs. If you consider this, Banyan tree is a vast, it has occupied large area. You cannot take numbers into consideration. Then in this example, we consider biomass. To express the density, we take biomass. Biomass of banyan tree is definitely more when compared to all these parthenium plants. So in such cases, to express density, we take biomass into consideration. Same way, sometimes you have to take relative density into consideration. For example, when we are talking about the density of fish in a particular season, at a particular place, then we take the number of fish captured per trap that we take into consideration. So relatively, in a particular season, so many number of uh, catfish were captured. The next season, the density of catfish they compare. So like that, relatively they'll find and they uh, do this survey and all which seasons per this fish density is more or less, they come into a conclusion. Like that, relative densities also they will take into consideration. Or if you take some microorganisms like Chlamydomonas or some bacteria, then we take volume. In a a petri dish, we can find the how many chlamydomonas organisms are there. Some thousand chlamydomonas in a uh, specific volume they mention. That, is, that way also they express the population density. Sometimes indirect count will be there. Generally, this they will do to find out the density of 
wild animals like elephants, tigers and all, they see the pug marks. They see the footprints. Pug marks means these footprints. Generally near the water sources and all, they count these pug marks. Depending on the pug marks, they can estimate the uh, density of the individuals. 